Well shit, I'm exhausted before I even started the motherfucking video. But we still getting started. Hello, it's Timidi. Welcome to my channel. You may know something different, and yes, the main difference is one, I am not holding the camera and sporadically walking around my room with it. And two, I have a big fancy green screen, and by big fancy green screen I mean I didn't know it was actually too small for the angle I was gonna shoot my fucking camera with. But that's okay. I haven't made videos in a while for a very long time because I often struggle with perfectionism. And this is what the topic of the video is going to be about because I literally had no other fucking topic. So I became a perfectionist at a very young age because when I was very young my mother always negatively encouraged me into perfection. Like for example I used to be really into drawing, comic making, lots of shit. Sorry, this tripod doesn't go. I'm going to have to hold you. Yes, I'm going to hold you. I bet you have more to test to need to be held anyway. When I was young, my mom used to encourage me as a kid to always be better. It didn't matter what it was, but she was just never happy. So I used to have a big thing for comics. I loved making comics. Anyone who knew me as a kid, they knew I loved to draw. I was doing it all the time on the side of my papers, in my classwork, on sheets of paper. Whenever I could find any, I would just love to do it. And instead of being just a normal encouraging parent, whenever I drew a comic or just traced from the inside of Calvin Hobbes' book, she would go, oh hey, let me see it. And inside I knew, oh fucking shit. And I, the first few times I showed her, she was like, oh, that's good. The line's a little uneven. And the letters are kind of off. And I don't know about your spacing. But you know what, that looks good. That looks good. And then, of course, you know, if a parent is just giving, like, backhanded compliments to their kid, they're not really going to appreciate it. Or, like, you know, sure, I was young and, like, 10 and autistic, but I still had the common sense to know, oh, it didn't feel very good when she was criticizing me. I'm not even making these for anyone to see. I'm making these just for pure fun. Oh, well, and I just continued making comics for fun. But then she continued to kind of hound me about it until one day I recall she just kind of burst into my room and stoned him. She was like, hi, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just drawing. Um, some more comics, and it's like, I just finished though, and then she'd be like, oh, okay, give it here. And I went silent, but it's like, okay, and then I just pulled it out. And then she instantly takes the piece of paper, looks down at it, and it's like, this looks ugly. I don't know why you did that here. This looks stupid. This is way too soon. You can't even read what's up here. I don't know why you did this. And then she literally rolled her eyes, tossed the paper at me, and said, do better, and then just stormed out the room. So as you can see, my mom is a very hate-mongering bitch, in the nicest way possible. And kids don't really react well to that, but it was always that way with her. Even in terms of cleaning, like, it could never just be like, oh, okay, I see that your closet is organized, I see there's nothing on the floor, and I see your beds are made, but what's in your drawers? And then next thing you know, she starts a huge montage where she starts opening every single drawer in my house. Just like, you know, once I actually came home and she just decided that she didn't like the way my clothes were folded and organized in my own dresser drawers, so she emptied all the drawers I had and dumped them all on the floor and forced me to reorganize every single one as the rest of the family watched me. Not very fun, what, coming home and seeing all your shit all over the floor and destroyed, but knowing her, that also was nothing new. Continuing on, then eventually just because, how do I put this, as a woman, there's a lot of things that is expected for perfectionism as well. Like, even before I made this video, and even a few weeks back, I thought, do I even want to make this video? Because I'll have to, like, find a way to be physically attractive. And as fucked up as it is, people won't watch a video if you just look busted. Maybe they will, but it won't be because they agree with what you're saying. It's because they'll laugh at you, and I didn't want people to laugh at me for looking like Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. A few weeks back, you knew how I looked. So I would go, oh, okay. How about I get my hair braided? My boyfriend paid for me to get my hair braided. It looks good. But even then, I can't make a video unless it's like, okay, I need to deep shower, I need to find out, like, specific jewelry, no mixed metals, it has to fit perfectly, my lipstick needs to match whatever I'm wearing, and my outfit, it needs to match my skin shade, oh, my skin needs to be perfectly clear, and then if I have, like, anything, like, even the slightest bit of acne, or, like, not done edges, or even just my hair being a fucking mess, then next thing you know, I'll just be depressed, and I think, god damn, I can't do it. Like, for example, you know how you might take a selfie and you'll look at it and you'll think, this is a good selfie, but then you post it and it only gets like a couple of likes or not as nearly as many as you thought. Or maybe you take a selfie and then you don't even post it yet, but you just stare at it for a long time like, okay, sure it's good, 
but what's wrong with it? And the next thing you know, it'll go from, oh, I look nice today, my skin is nice and shiny, my lip gloss matches my shirt, my jewelry is cute, and my hair is nice. Then you stare a little too long, and it's like, God, my eyebrows are doing this. You can see the little pockets under my eyes. What's up with my nose? Oh, the acne scars are showing. Oh, my edges. Oh, my braid fucking ponytail is coming super undone. I'm just going to take this shit off. I love this, though. And the next thing you know, you're just questioning why you even bother. Because if you try your best and you can't get it to A level A game shit, what's the fucking point? Is there any fun in it whatsoever? And I guess I struggle with that. And I guess because of my mom being kind of a traumatic bitch my entire childhood and always striving for, for perfection, it never really led to positive results. To be fair, as a kid, I also had autism, but I was seen as like a gifted child, like the super smart, stereotypical uh, youngest child. And it was nice because, you know, I had Asperger's syndrome, but it was undiagnosed. So people just thought she's really smart. She never has to study for a single test or even have to reread a book. She'll just remember it and then she'll just nail every single test and always get straight A's. She's absolutely flawless. And then, you know, once you or how do I put this? Once you actually get to the point where it's like you, you're at a point where you don't even need to put an effort to try and be perfect, then it really sucks more whenever you do anything and you have to realize, I actually have to try. Ugh. And then even worse, if it's like, oh, now I'm getting close to like, you know, maybe even you do try your best. You try your absolute hardest. Like you write an essay and you think, I nail each and every topic. People loved hearing me talk about this, but then you get a C minus. Fuck Miss Morici for that. Or maybe you try your best to look good for a date. You put on your best face of makeup, you put on your best jewelry, your best clothes, and then you get into the car and then the guy barely even looks at you and doesn't even remember to compliment you, which I also struggle with. For fuck's sake, it's, I ask for one thing out of men. Perfectionism kind of plagues my life. If it's not perfect, then I feel like it's pointless. But... I don't know, before I even recorded this video, I've considered having a breakdown because I thought I should take selfies so that when I go on dating sites, instead of like being constantly overlooked because of a certain angle or whatever, I can just have presentable photos so then they know that I'm attractive instead of just whatever shitty angle or shitty lighting or shitty filter is given to them. But I couldn't get the right photo and I was freaking out and then I thought if I can't even get the right fucking photo what makes me think I could get the right video and then as I was setting up my ow as I was setting up my thing I realized oh my green screen is way too small for the background how embarrassing and then I realized god my acne scars really increased this week from stress and oh my god what the fuck are my eyebrows doing and uh, I don't know if I like this shade of lip gloss and then shit just got worse and worse and then the final kicker was when I was using my tripod. I thought this is a very nice tripod. It's kind of shitty, but hopefully it doesn't bake on me. And guess what the fuck it does? It just like yeet. And this keeps falling off because it lost a bolt months ago, and I haven't been able to find it, and it can't stay on straight. So yay, money down the drain. Uh. And then I was gonna have to record on this under the bitch. And instead of just letting self-doubt plague me, I thought, why bother to be perfect? Literally no one in my life knows me as flawless. Like, if anything, they like that I'm flawed. They like that I have a weird voice. They like that I still like, I don't know, they like me for a plethora of reasons. I don't know all of them, but like, even then, why should I try my hardest to always be impressive? It's pointless. I would show you the state of my room since it's relevant, but I've been in a depression for the past few weeks because when my mother was basically threatening to kick me out the house, but luckily the fires came, so I didn't get kicked out the house that week, but I was still staying out of her way as much as possible. And, oh, just, I get depressed randomly, it just happens. I'll just not have the energy to get out of bed or see the point in anything, because, I don't know. And... Damn it, I forgot where I'm even going at with this video. I kept thinking, I can start this video, I can start my talk show, but anytime I talked to someone about my talk show, it seemed like it was never good enough. Or anytime I told someone about, like, a writing or a script idea I had, it felt like no one was listening and no one cared about what I wrote. 
And then eventually it just also comes in the paranoia of what if I try my best and do my best and do what I feel is my best and people don't respond. Like for example, I made a video a while back that kind of flopped. Like all my other videos were doing good. Like, you know, the first video where I talked about Tom and his fucking bases getting stuck in my vagina. Um, and also his fucking puppy dog fetish. The second one where I talked about Adrian and puking all over his dick and how he went to a glory hole. And people liked my videos. And I made a few after that and I just thought, wow, maybe, maybe I can really be on the path to being like a content creator or something and being recognized. That could feel good. Until I made a video that didn't. And that was the video where I talked about the time before I went to a fashion... A casting call someone waxed off half of my eyebrow so I came to a casting call with like one eyebrow that was like a full-on fluffy caterpillar that I just only slightly trimmed down and the other one was a small little roly-poly because they just removed the entire tail and some of the front and I thought the story was funny but I guess my storytelling abilities weren't good enough or whatever and I don't know, it didn't get enough views, it didn't get any comments or support like the other ones, and I guess in my head I thought, god damn, I really fucked up this time. Maybe everyone hates me, maybe everyone thinks that it's fucking terrible, and maybe I don't have what it takes. All I can say is, I don't know, maybe I'm just, at this point, conditioned to just be afraid of failure. Because, you know, when you live, like, a big portion of your life going either, oh, I don't need to try at all to succeed, it feels great. And then middle school, it was like, oh, well, uh, I don't have to do anything. I'll just be by myself. I don't care about other people's opinions. I'll do what I want. And then high school being like, oh, uh, I'm just naturally flawless. People think I'm pretty. People think I'm smart. People really like this and that about me. And then next, you know, the last part of high school up until now, it's like, damn, life is shit. Life is just continually shit. And I got to keep forcing myself through it. This is unbearable. I, why should I bother trying in life at all if it's just going to be even when I do, I get smacked down to the ground. And now I'm here. I guess I'm just struggling with the fear of failure the most. Because, you know, no one wants to be the kid that goes home to their parents with the fucking F report card or the negative story or detention or something. And no one wants to grow up and be known as like oh like you know people had high hopes for me as a kid they thought oh this is going to be the girl that turns into a success like when i was young my mom even said hey if you're so beautiful if you one day decide to be like Tara banks and be a model you could live with me forever rent free and we can like fly to like tokyo and japan together and this and that but life didn't go that way my modeling career just was depressing and full of creeps and annoying people and or depression because yet again I'll tell you in future videos my life fucking sucks and I was going through it it just sucks because even when I do think I'll succeed the fear of falling back is always present I never know when it will just be like oh you tried your best for a photo shoot, but then it didn't get any likes or comments. Or you took a selfie for a dating site, and then everyone just goes on and skips your profile. Or even will call you ugly in person. Or your profile ugly in person. You'll, anyway. I... Quarantine... How do I put this? I haven't even been able to clean my room lately, because basically... I'm a very, I've just gotten into the habit of organizing and I felt confident. I organized all of my makeup so that it would be divided by like shades, color tones, um, events, occasion, um, and then just organized in convenience too, like which I would access most least. And it took a fuck ton of effort. It took me like several weeks just to find out where to put the reds and the browns and the fucking lip glosses. I am a perfectionist and I hate failure. And if I want it to succeed, I will do my best to succeed. But then guess what happened? Like, you know, anything could happen. I did the same with my clothes and my jewelry. I made sure I went to a laundry service, got all of my nice clothes, like, organized. I organized each fucking cabinet by color, by event, by fucking category, by, uh aesthetic like you know one drawer could be like oh this is where all my feminine date clothes are so i could wear shit like this and easily woo someone and seem oh it's so effortless i'm just effortlessly pretty it's just a coincidence that my lip gloss matches my shirt Ooh, 
Or it could be the second drawer where it's like, oh, this is where I'll just wear my tomboy clothes when I don't give a fuck. I'm just in a rush going at the house for an errand or whatever. And the very last drawer where it's just all my goth clothes because, yes, I am very goth and alt in private. Femininity is just something that I do occasionally. Moving on. And I did the same with my jewelry. I had this beautiful shelf of jewelry. I organized it, like, by uh, metal color, by event, whether I was going feminine or more butch that day. And I organized every single ring and piece of jewelry I had. And in the long run, I did all that work, and it felt like my life is finally coming together. Maybe I can finally just have a nice clean room and then effortlessly make a video where it's like, oh, just a little lip gloss, a shirt out this drawer here, a nice pair of jeans here, some little earrings and a necklace that matches, and then bada bing bada boom, I just go into my easy, perfectly sized fucking green screen studio with my cool lights and I record a video easy. But life is never easy because guess what happened to the fucking jewelry shelf? Oh, I'll show you. It just fucking ripped apart. A bunch of the jewelry, as I was gone, just fell because I guess these tore off. And then it all kind of calamitied and then fell all over the floor. And every single necklace got tangled up. Every single earring lost its fucking pair. And I was miserable. And then for my shirts, I, oh, yes. You know how I said I got a folding laundry service? Well, there it is in that fucking bag. Actually, there's two bags. You just can't see it. And did I have any of the energy to go, oh, now I, just because I put all that effort into making sure each clothing was organized by color, shade, and event, do I have the effort to do all that fucking shit again? Hell the fuck no, I don't. Is it, like, which, like, I strive for perfection because I figure I want it to be the best potential thing to have ease in the future, knowing that everything will be perfect from now on, but life is unpredictable. So, no, I did not just get what I wanted. Instead, my brain went, oh, okay, now you have a lot of clothes that you have to re-put up. But tell me this, which sounds easier? Uh, Reorganizing every single clothing that was already folded and stacking it neatly into drawers by color over and over again with those big-ass bags or just taking a nap and maybe, like, just wearing the same fucking three shirts. And guess what my brain did? I guess what I'm saying is, perfectionism sucks, and I need to strive for it less. I had to tell myself this so much in life, just in general, because I thought, my life can fuck up at any point. Shit gets fucked. See, I don't even know what to say right now, I'm just ad-libbing, because I'm not aiming to be perfect. Overall, I thought things would be easier than they would be. And I was hoping that I could at least have one thing that would go easy, but apparently not. My life is nothing short of easy. I mean, nothing easy, and y'all be sure to know that. So hey, here I am with my green screen that is way too fucking small. And my hair down, with my bread on the floor. And I'd say that me being me, just holding my phone, Talking with a lot of hand gestures and stuttering, that's way better than anything else. Because, hey, if people loved me when I was wearing a fucking headscarf and a dress with some random ass earrings just talking about the time I got plowed, then there's no reason they can't accept me now when nothing's changed. I'm still holding the camera with my hands and not some fancy fucked up ass tripod and I'm still here. Still entertaining, still engaging, and still spitting facts. So yeah, love you. I think that's the end of the video.